Hello sisters and brothers and we welcome you again to our series on prayer and the family, the domestic church. And so in this episode we are looking at imaginative contemplation which comes to us from the tradition of the Jesuits and it's in a special way it's founder St. Ignatius of Loyola. Now just, just something to say about the way in which the word contemplation has been used here. It's not the same as we would think of it in, in the tradition, this kind of uh, letting go of this this removal of any kind of uh, thoughts or distractions or images or ideas to, to free ourselves for union with God. When Ignatius Loyola uses this, he's employing it in terms of the way in which the imagination and through the, the imagination we are praying and coming into a deeper union with God. Now Ignatius of Loyola had imagined it many times and, and in his imagination in his writings we read about the ways in which he thought about being a knight, you know, and, and this kind of uh, chivalry. And, but, but for God, as he read the lives of the saints, how do we live this kind of uh, zeal and love and fervor for God? And so what we want to do is invite you as a family to use your imagination. We use our imagination for all sorts of things. Use your imagination to enter into the gospel passages. When we begin imaginative contemplation, I invite you, gather as your family, get the word of God. Perhaps each person could again have their own Bible or if they're using devices, have it on airplane mode or silenced so they're not distracted and each person has the passage of scripture before them. Quite often many people use something from the Gospels, the weekend gospel we can take. Gather, begin with a sign of the cross and a prayer to the Holy Spirit or a song to the Holy Spirit. Next. Read a passage of scripture. Have one person in the family read it, or you may read it together. It's up to you. Pause and begin to allow your imagination to work. Begin to enter into the scene. Using your senses, what do you see? What do you hear? What do you feel? How are people dressed? What's going on? What happened just before the scene? What happened as the whole gospel reading is progressing? What is happening? How are things changing? Is it getting noisier? What, what, is, what is the movement happening around you? What's going on? That's the first step. You may read the reading again, if you would like to, and enter into it. Again, you may see something you didn't see, or hear something you didn't hear, or your imagination, imagination may keep going. And allow a time of silence. And then share as a family. What did you see? Here. What are you imagining? Set the scene around you. So that's the first part of it. Now we're going to ask the Holy Spirit to open our hearts and welcome in the words we're about to hear. Hey Joshua, I'm going to read as far. Listen to this now, Granny. In the evening of the first day of the week, the doors were closed in the room where the disciples were for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them. He said to them, Peace be with you, and showed them his hands and his sides. The disciples were filled with joy when they saw the Lord, and he said to them, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so am I sending you. After saying this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. For those who sins you forgive, they are forgiven. And for those who whose sins you retain, they are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. And let's imagine what it would be like if we were in that story. Okay? Let me stand up for this one. Okay. In the evening of the first day of the week, the doors were closed in the room where the disciples were for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them. He said to them, Peace be with you. 
and showed them his hands and his sides. The disciples were filled with joy when they saw the Lord. And he said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so am I sending you. After saying this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. For those whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. For those whose sins you retained, they are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. So I imagine that initially they would be fearful, right? And as Jesus appeared, you know, I believe they would have been shocked, after which comforted by his presence. Yeah, I agree. Yeah? yeah. <laughs> mm. Well, in that room would be fear from the Jews outside, and then when Jesus comes, the fear would change to shock because they thought that he had passed and then comfort knowing he is there with them. And they'd be holding each other too. Yeah, from the fear. <laughs> Next we invite you. Who are you in this passage? You are someone there. Identify with one of the characters or you may be there, not as one of the characters, but present in the room. Who are you? And allow your imagination to flow with this. Then enter into what is happening. What is happening as you experience it through the text? What is God doing in you? What are you feeling? What are you hearing? Talk to Jesus about it. Listen to what he is saying to you, what is happening? What does God want to speak to you and to your family through the encounter with the sex in your imagination? And we invite you in all of these stages to share with each other. As we share, we grow and we feed each other and we come to a new place. I'm one of the women in the room. You know, I'm one of the room, women in the room, maybe with, I'm with Mary in the room, with the apostles. We are all afraid because of the Jews. And um, we, he just appeared, you know. We know that he is risen because we were told that he is risen, but to see him there with us, you know, filled us with joy, great joy to see him there. And then he said to us, peace be with you. And we all became calm, calm, calm. And he repeated himself, peace be with you. And then being there with him, when he said he breathed on us and his spirit fall on us and a sense of warmth came over me being in the room there to know that he is there among us and showing us with his love, his peace. I think I'll be one of the disciples and we're all there in fear of the Jews but then when Jesus appeared I'll be one of the people in shock even though we know that he's risen to see him in front of us it'd be so surreal well I see myself as just an onlooker looking and seeing everybody in fear and then they're shocked when Jesus appeared and eventually they can't how they became calm and and all of a sudden when he appeared, not alone did they feel warmth, but I felt warmth and I felt a connection with him, seeing him as he is risen, and I felt calm and comfort. If it is Jesus could tell you, peace be with you, who am I to fear anything? God telling me, peace be with me. So all the fears that you would normally have. And God could tell you, peace be with you. 
should go. We should be able to relax and see. God is in charge. God is in control. Although we as humans like to be in control of stuff, God is in control. As he said, um, he poured his Holy Spirit on us. And the whole room, you know, became calm. And I can see everybody, you know, just staring at him. And each one receiving this Holy Spirit in their own way. You know, I felt it and I felt beside the warmth, I felt joy, I felt peace at that moment. Like for me, when the Holy Spirit came in the room there, I started to feel like light, like all the weight of the, of the fear that was there weighing on my shoulders just started to lift, like if I was levitating, like if I was just going up. It was just this removal of any kind of anxiety. And it was a nice feeling. I saw everything now in a more pleasant tone. I saw people's faces before everything looked dark in the room. And then I started to see their faces. Everything lit up. That was my experience with the Holy Spirit being poured on me. When the Holy Spirit entered the room, for me, I felt a sense of unconditional love. As if all the darkest corners inside of me are being illuminated by this big bright light. As I looked around, the entire room was filled with flames, yet no one was getting burnt or was on fire. It helped me to see the world through a new lens, in which I don't understand why all this fighting is occurring and instead have love for my fellow neighbor and man. Well, for me, when the Holy Spirit um, appeared, well, really well, I felt like I was being hugged, embraced by it. Although I had or didn't understand how it was coming, I felt a sense of calm, I felt calm, I felt love, I felt all those emotions. And it was a sense of relief from the fear I was At the end of our imaginative contemplation, as a family, share. Share what happened. What, what did you feel God inviting you to do out of this? How, how is God inviting you to be out of this? What kind of relationship God is asking of you? Remember, all our prayer must lead to a new way of living. It must manifest itself in our lives, in our families. What is a challenge for our families? So that in our actions, our prayers bear in fruit. And it encourages us to deepen our prayer. What kind of prayer, what, what, what more is God asking of us is, is a very Ignatian way of saying this. Ignatius uh, always would ask in his exam, what is the more that God is asking? Magis from the, from the Latin for more. What is the more that God is asking of you as a family as you enter into this imaginative contemplation and other ways of praying? I take from it that you should, although you may be fearful or nervous, you should just trust in God and you will feel a sense of calm, you will be calm, you will be, you no longer have that fear, you should just trust in yeah. Just like you, Adrian, I also feel that way. You know that at the end of the day, God is in control. We want sometimes, at least for me personally, I would sometimes think, you know, I have to make sure this in place, that in place, the other in place. However, this acknowledges the fact that God is in control. God is in charge, and for me to just know and trust and believe. He will do what is required and I don't need to fear. Just, you know, similar to what you said. But I believe that if you ever went through difficult times, if you have been in a tough spot, that if you allow Jesus to enter your life, that he will be able to guide you out of this hard spot that is not always final. And our in God we could get through things and make it out. Very good, Joshua. Yes, and just as you all have said, you know, that is what he's sending to us, you know, um, to trust in him, believe in him. And once you do that and have his trust, you will get through any difficulty in life.
Then we invite you to end off with prayer. The glory be, and our Father, a Hail Mary, one of your favorite prayers, and to bless each other. So you all often pray with our imagination, and us now pray to the Holy Spirit. Breathe in me, O Holy Spirit, that my thoughts may all be holy. Act in me, O Holy Spirit, that my work too may be holy. Draw my heart, O Holy Spirit, that I love but what is holy. Strengthen me, O Holy Spirit, to defend all that is holy. Guard me then, O Holy Spirit, that I always may be holy. Amen. So glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Sisters and brothers, thank you for joining us once again. And we pray that this blesses your own family and that you can share this with others. Please, try these methods and allow the word of God to deepen your family life and that you may truly be who you're called to be. A fruitful communion of life and love, a blessing to this earth as families. And therefore, schools where we teach about love, about God, about who we are called to be. God bless.